You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. Now, this is really a special guest. A lot of times we say special guest and it don't be nobody. And I was like, I can't believe she's really coming up here. But this is a special guest. Yes. This is every man's fantasy for at least the past 20 years, Miss Nia Long. Wow. <laughs> really? Yes. What? Jeez. Since Boys in the Hood, when you had the pink and white jumpsuit on. <laughs> The little sweatsuit, whatever that was, the nylon joint. She was a uh, brandy then in nylon. Boys in the Hood. She was yeah. brandy in Boys in the Hood. Absolutely. Yes, I was. Well, first yes, of all, I you know, um, you ain't have to cheer for the Spurs like that. You ain't had to beat up my Knicks like that. <laughs> I seen you cheering go Spurs. You ain't had to beat up the Knicks like yeah, that. Yeah, aren't you from Brooklyn? I'm from Brooklyn. And should you be a Nets fan? I should be, but here's the thing. My man is coaching for the Spurs, okay. so there's no way. I mean, you know, yeah, you know how that goes. Root for the home team. That's right. I unfollowed Absolutely. you when you put that go Spurs. I was like, no, no, she's, she's Did not, you unfollow yeah, me? Yeah, she's not from New York no more. Get out of here. Well, don't worry. Um, you couldn't DM anyway because she wasn't following you back, I'm sure, and she would never notice. Oh, she yeah, she didn't she even, even notice you unfollowed her. <laughs> yeah, she much. so hurt over that news. So distraught. Pretty much. First of all, he's following now because I'm here. Now, you look amazing. Thank you. Like, what is your secret, man? Uh, is there a fountain of, of youth you can tell us about to go swimming? You know, <laughs> it's mostly rest and just not hanging out and, and spending time with my family and gotcha. eating right and just taking care of myself. You know, you have to preserve. I would imagine you don't get a lot of rest, though. I mean, you have two children, a full-time job, a crazy career, a man and all of that. Like, when do you find time to sleep? I find time. <laughs> I really do. Mm -hmm. I just the thing is, is I really f have found that when I take time for self, everything else works out better. Right. You know, I'm a better mommy. The kids are happier because I, I have to switch into different roles. So it's it's important to take care of yourself first. I agree with that. A lot of people act like, you know, if you sleep, then you're, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You got to work, grind. Well, how you're do you balance that? When you that? Sleep. I think it's great to get it's rest. Crazy. How do you balance that with the kids and the movies and your man? He's on the road with the with I the know. Spurs. Like, you know, how do you balance all of that? Well, Charlie, stop looking at her like that. Hey? That's the fun that's part. That's me along. I can look at her anywhere. She's beautiful, okay? <laughs> and the way she keeps shifting in the chair every time she moves. That's because like... my feet don't touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only five Anybody? two. <laughs> I, you know what? Going on the road and and meeting up with Ime is the fun part because I feel like it it keeps the relationship exciting mm -hmm. and also it's like a little mini vacation. Um, and then I have help. No, I wait, have wait, wait, wait. So do you role play? Like, do you come up and like like act like you're different a, characters? Yeah, yeah, act like you're a, a, a stripper <laughs> or act like you're a groupie. A and you'd be like, yeah, I'm a groupie. Or you do stuff like that. I, he would probably look at me and say, "What is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> and he does that at home. That's why. He's Shut just up. so used to it. It's like, <laughs> part of so is, he, is he in a bad mood if they lose? Not at all. Like, I was actually, we were in Miami when they won that, when they almost won the championship, and it was like the the game that they won before mm -hmm. the championship game, two games before that. And I was so scared to see him afterwards. I was like, oh my God, what do I say? I don't even know what to mm -hmm. say. And he was fine. He's. He's easy. Now let's He's talk been about doing it so long. Let's talk about the best man. Fifteen years later. Yes. Why come out with a sequel after fifteen years? I think Malcolm Lee wanted to make sure the story was worthy. That there was, you know, something inter interesting to to tell. And when you think about life, the amount of things that happen in fifteen years is probably a lot more interesting than ha than what happens in five years. Gotcha. So um, the characters are, you know, people that we all know and love, and and probably have friends that have similar lives to these characters and I just think you know what it's the, when the, when the timing is right for something, that's usually when it falls into place. I'm thinking that you aged better than everybody else on the cast. I don't know about everybody that. Everybody actually looks pretty good. Really? I was yeah, I was looking okay. at all the pictures so now Lathan still looks great. Oh no, so now yeah, absolutely. That's vintage vagina. Uh, Terrence Howard. Um, any 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 woman that's explain, explain to her what vintage vagina vintage is. Vintage yeah. vagina. Any woman that's over 40 and still looks good is vintage vagina cuz she's <laughs> aging like wine. A lot of girls out here are aging like milk. Yeah. So, so he called so, you vintage So be vagina. happy to be on the wine Yeah, side he called you that before you walked in. I don't want anyone labeling my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I told him it's uh, offensive. I didn't think it was offensive. It's very offensive. Do yeah. you used to do the women say vintage penis? I mean, like... I hope so. I don't want anything to do with a vintage penis. <laughs> we like our penises young and fresh. Yes. Oh, my goodness. See, that's why all the young guys <laughs> is getting the older women now, which well. is a good thing. More power to them. Hey, man. Now, back to the best man holiday. Now, <laughs> 15... You want me to lower your seat for you? 
No, it's fine. Okay. I don't think right. you go to <laughs> face people as I'm talking. Okay. That's cool. You and Charlamagne are the same height, so. I'm 5'6". <laughs> Liar. Thank you. With heels. Now, explain the best man holiday a little bit. Now, it's, it's back out. It seems funny. What can we expect? What's different? What, you know, what happens in the movie that you can give us? Well, I'll tell you that the friends all get together for mm-hmm. Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, we meet up at uh, Mia and Lance's house, which is played by Morris Chestnut and Monica Calhoun. Mm-hmm. And some of the friends have sort of kept in touch throughout the years, but I, I feel like this is definitely like a big reunion because mm-hmm. everyone's putting a lot of pressure on, okay, I haven't seen him in years, what's going to happen? So we all get there, and, and my d- big dilemma is now my character is a television producer. My big dilemma is bringing my new boyfriend into the group. Mm-hmm. Um, played by Eddie Cibrian, who's amazing and has the best dimples on the planet. And, and white, right? And he's white. Oh, mm-hmm. okay, so that's the that's So the that's hook. like, yeah. Okay. So the, the hook is, you know, here's Jordan, who, you know, is this African-American powerhouse. Why isn't she with a black man? It's been a big question. And, and my answer to that would be that, you know, interrela- interracial relationships are things that are happening around us each and every day. And so I wanted to keep the character contemporary. And mm-hmm. it's not that she's turning her back on on black men. It's just that this is the guy she met that's in her circle and it works for her. Um, Sounds like a great idea to me. Right? <laughs> well, Angela's been scorned by so many black men that she's ready to try something. Yeah, she's single something once again. Yes. Well, look, you got to mix it up, girl. You got to... My man is is mixed and it's it's great because you get the best of both worlds. I'm mixed. I wouldn't be here for my parents. But. Right. You know, we have to... So, so anyway, so Jordan... But the biggest moral, I, I would say like her personal struggle is... Um, how do you balance being vulnerable and open to love and still being this powerful woman and, and being a television producer and sort of running this 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 network? And there are a lot of women out there that put love to the side for the for the sake of their careers. Mm-hmm. And then they wake up one day and they go, oh, oh, wait, wait, what happened to love and marriage and children? And mm-hmm. then sometimes it's, you know, too late. So um, I wanted Jordan to sort of have that Balance and and to and to when you see her again, that you meet her at a time where she's really trying to create balance with love and balance with work. So yeah. you had input into the character. I did. I did. Malcolm was really great with us. He um he talked to us a lot about what he wanted to do, and then we were able to share with him what we thought would be great. Mm-hmm. Are people still hung up on interracial dating like that, or do they I just look at people so. and say that's Mm-mm. just a happy couple? I don't think so. But I think I think that sort of goes back to you know, quote unquote, black film. So so mm-hmm. that if there's more than two or three people that in the film that are black, it's considered a black movie. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to stop talking about it in those terms. Absolutely. And I think that interracial relationships goes right in that same category. It's happening. It's real. Why is it? I'm still an shocked issue. that people even ask me those questions. Like, it's big. It's still big. With black men date white women, it's still big. People, but that's a, a lot of black women still have a problem with way it. of thinking. Mm-hmm. I think people have a problem with it when they feel like they don't have in their lives what they want. Right. True. Right, so it becomes like a, a an open wound to see, you know, a black man walking down the street with a white girl, and right. you're like a single black woman, or you know, it works both ways. How is Hollywood for uh, black actors and actresses nowadays? Is it a lot of roles, less roles, good roles? You know, it it seems like it goes in. It's cyclical. I th- I feel like it goes in cycles. I feel like you know there are times when the black romantic comedy is a thing, or you know, Carrie Washington's doing amazing work on Scandal. So mm-hmm. now you're going to see a lot of more, a lot more black women on television. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but I would have to honestly say that it is difficult. But it's difficult for everyone. It's difficult because it's a business. It's difficult because it's run and and motivated by money Mm -hmm. and so whatever is selling is what they're going to make so hopefully everybody comes out and supports the film because then we'll be able to make more funny romantic comedies and 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 you'll see more of us on film and that's what it boils down to i feel like reality tv has made it rough for television also because it's a lot of actors maybe you know there's so many reality tv shows that's the hot thing right now and they're not actors. Right. They're they they're trying to make them into actors. They're making a lot of money. Though. And they're Losers. making money. <laughs> and they don't Bums. have to pay them a lot. And they don't have to pay them a lot, which makes it hard for the actors that do get paid to act. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan. Mm-hmm. I think we're portrayed in a in a negative way on on most of these shows. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, we I, I think I think at least I know me and my friends. We want to see stuff that's smarter. That's you know right. that that can entertain, but also that's intelligent. How do you feel about when, um, let's say, musicians take a lot of your roles? You know, 
Because you got like a lot of people that they don't really care if they can act or not. As long as they can get people in those movie theaters selling those tickets, that's what I see a lot as well. And that's the, that goes right back to what we were saying earlier about just it is driven by money. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't take it personal because I've been in the game long enough to understand that it is driven by money. And mm-hmm. sometimes the stunt casting is there because... Maybe they're not secure about the story. Maybe mm-hmm. they're not secure about the director. Maybe, you know, maybe they don't really care about the. And when I say they, I mean the powers. Mm-hmm. Ah, Absolutely. The powers. Um, and and, and it's, it's part of the business. Mm-hmm. Have you ever turned down a role because they had like a superstar singer or rapper as the lead and they wanted you to be like a supporting cast member and you was like, uh, I'm Neil Long, bitch. That's what you <laughs> Headline. I have actually said that there was there was a guy, I won't say his name, but they wanted him in a film that I was going to do, and I was like, absolutely not. Did and you say I'm Nia Long, bitch? And I said, I'm Nia Long, <laughs> biatch. Well, was, it because of his, what, was, he, was it because of his music or something he represented? It, it was music, and I just didn't feel like he was worthy to be in a love scene with me. I was like, no. Oh, so you didn't say that part. You didn't say the love scene <laughs> part. part. Love scene. It, was, yeah. it was full on, full on, full on love scene. I was like, no, thank you. Now, you, you said on Twitter that when you do a movie, you watch it one time, and then you don't look at it again until 10 years later. It's true. I might catch little bits and pieces, but I really don't rewatch my work because I can always find, ooh, those eyebrows, ooh, that, you know, it's always mm-hmm. something that I'm picking myself apart. Mm-hmm. And and I find it, you know, it's interesting because my 12-year-old, he doesn't really, he hasn't seen any of my films. Really? And None of them? Not, not even Boys in the Hood? Gotta let him watch Boys in the Hood. I love Jones. Well, here's the love thing. Jones. He has a thing about, like, I don't want to see a guy kissing you, mommy. Like, he's very protective. Mm-hmm. Um He'd hate boys in the hood though. You, <laughs> that, that's, no, no, no. no that, you gave uh, Trey, Trey what we call sympathy box. Your character gave him sympathy box. Yeah, you felt sorry box. for him. He got Ricky a little... had just got killed. Right. Yeah. That's how Charlamagne gets a lot of his action. <laughs> a win is a win. <laughs> a win is a win. No matter what, what the what's in the box, a win right? Is a win. <laughs> um, no, I I have a plan actually to start showing him certain films. Mm-hmm. Um. He didn't even want to come to the premiere of The Best Man. But the good thing is, is he actually plays my son in my next film, which comes oh, really? out. Yeah, which comes out um, in the spring. It's called The Single Moms Club. I wanted to recognize single moms. Okay. And when the script came to me, I was like, this is so important. It's a passion project for It's you. a passion project. Gotcha. Tyler Perry directed it. I had so much fun with him. He is, the way he runs his machine is like, Wow! Right. Did we just make a movie? And so, and so, my son actually plays my son in the film. That's great. He auditioned. I made him audition. He auditioned. <laughs> he was so cute. I didn't have anything to do with his pr- preparation. Mm-hmm. I talked to my mom. I said, "Mommy, you've got to do this because it's too close and emotional right. for me." And um, I said to Tyler, I was like, I'm sending you the tape. Let me know if he got the job. So we sent it. And three days later, Tyler was like, yeah, if he wants to do it, he was great. And so I, it was fun for us because that's something you, I will have on film mm-hmm. forever. Right. Absolutely. That was the first movie you did after you had your last baby, right? The yes, first that was my on. first. That was my first. Well, actually, House of Lies last season was my first job back to work. Mm-hmm. What's your um, dream role? Oh, I would love to do a period piece. What period? What time period? I don't know. Maybe either 70s. Oh, that'd be fun. 70s mm-hmm. would be fun. <laughs> um, or even 40s. Mm-hmm. You know, those are my two. I think for mm-hmm. there was so much going on during that time. And I love that, you know, that whole Harlem Renaissance era was just mm-hmm. amazing. And is, is there a specific uh, character, somebody you may have uh, looked up to growing up that you would love to, to do? I would love to play Asada. I think she mm. was, that was, I mean, that that's one of my all-time favorite books, and I think people have tried to make that film. Um, I don't know what's happening, but I think mm-hmm. it's an amazing story to be told, and um, just her role and how she was connected to the Black Panthers and, and her contribution to um, black history and mm-hmm. just being a part of just that whole time when black women needed and wanted to have a voice. Gotcha. What was your favorite movie that you've done? So of far, all of them. yeah. Uh, the best man holiday out this Friday. No, besides, <laughs> yes, it would be the best man holiday. Besides out this that one. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. Um, ooh, I would have to say Love Jones, just because mm-hmm. it was such a, it was such a impactful 
um, moment in my career, mm-hmm. and and it was the first of its kind in terms of seeing black contemporary romance on film, where mm-hmm. we were real characters, where it was driven by the food and the music and the poetry mm-hmm. and all of the things that make us such an enriched culture. They never approached bro- you about doing a sequel for that. It's been floating around forever. I mean, I don't know. How many brothers came to you spitting poetry after <laughs> the movie came out? When did it stop? <laughs> It's has still it happening. It's, a, it's still happening. It's gotcha. still happening. <laughs> now, now, you and OG, when you was coming up, the blogs weren't as, as popping as they were now. Like, how, how do you deal with that? Because we see all kind of stuff about you on the blogs all the time. Like, they had a picture of your camel toe, which I thought was <laughs> You are ridiculous. really obsessed. Yeah, he's with, a perv. With he's definitely vaginas. a perv. With vaginas yeah. this morning. I you mean, are really, really a perv. You like, must have just looked that up. That must be a screen. The saber. one thing that he talks about is <laughs> so when the blogs was... have things to say about you, and they had a picture of your camel toe. I just thought it was tacky. <laughs> it, is zo- so tacky. it was I zoomed mean, I in. Was at the gym, what do you want from my <laughs> yeah. life? Every woman has camel toe when they're in spandex. <laughs> He's you looking at it right now. Oh, no, right now. At he just deleted it. He just took it off. <laughs> 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 well, Nia Long, we along. We appreciate you joining us. The best man holiday in movie theaters this Friday, and thank you for coming and being a good. Everybody sport. is so excited to see thank that movie. By the way, you. all my friends are like, I can't wait to see the best man holiday. I saw all the previews for it. So you know what? There's really something in it for everyone. It's not a chick flick, mm-hmm. and it's not just like you know the guys can enjoy it, the girls can enjoy it. You can take your family. It's it's really like. One of those films where there's a, a little bit of everything for everybody. The eyes are going because their girls want them to. And they're, they're not going to argue. see my camel toe. Not <laughs> there true. you go. True indeed. There you go. If this camel toe's making club. a cameo, we'll be she there. You got to show it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. <laughs> it's Nia Long. Jamie, you better zoom. What is wrong? Oh, turn the envy when she tells you to zoom in on her box. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning, tune in.